Welcome to the show, Dr. Ben Taimorazi. It is a pleasure to have you here. Pleasure is mine. Thank you for having me. So I'm looking forward to this conversation because this is an amazing topic. So you're... I, I think people will read the intro of the podcast and list, because if I was going to list your credentials here, we'd, we'd use up too much of our time. <laughs> but suffice to say that the good doctor has been studying and digging into headaches, which is a massive problem in the world. Absolutely. I think yes. next to sleep, it's got to be one of the big ones. Yes, headaches are an extremely prevalent condition. And especially in the case of migraine, which is a very disabling headache, roughly about 15% of general population are affected by this. In the United States only, we have about 40 million people who suffer from migraine. Wow. So, but again, it is important to be able to distinguish between different types of headaches because every headache is not a migraine. Right. So <clears throat> that's a perfect segue to my next question. And, and even within the world of migraines, are there different, different types of migraines or can they be triggered by different things? Because someone who has migraines know they have migraines. To your point, you were saying they're debilitating. I mean, the people, I've had headaches that I think have verged on migraine where the pain was so intense, it was almost brings tears to your eyes. But it doesn't happen to me very often. I know people who, like, they are migraine sufferers. And when they feel one coming on, everything in their life has to stop. Absolutely. Yes. So about 60% of that 40 million people that we mentioned earlier have frequent migraine attacks. So basically, a person may have an attack every three or four months. But again, 60% of people have more than three or four headache attacks per month. Wow. And it is extremely important for the physician or the health healthcare provider that is taking care of these patients to recognize which ones are these patients. So very proactively, they need to be treated with one goal in mind, and that is to prevent chronification of migraine. By definition, chronification is when your headaches are more than 15 days a month mm -hmm. and for more than three months. So, and the rate of chronification is roughly at about three to 4% per year. So if a person, let's say, and unfortunately, as you know, migraine is a condition that starts early in, in life, like in teenage years. Mm -hmm. So picture a person that is suffering from migraine at age 15, and with a rate of chronification being about three or 4% per year, at age 25 to 30, there is about 60 to 70% chance that this person now has very frequent headaches, more than 15 headache days per month. Mm -hmm. So, and that would make it very difficult to treat. And that is why we as physicians or healthcare providers dealing with these patients have to aggressively treat the headaches so they will not become chronic. So do we, I would imagine there are many different reasons why people get a migraine or we could call them migraine triggers. Are, how much is known about that, do you think? Like so there are very clearly defined migraine triggers, which are not many, but unfortunately, those are basically few of the reasons you get triggered. And the important ones is uh, red wine, chocolate, citrus fruit, some forms of cheese, they may contain some ingredients that will trigger. But most patients, unfortunately, Unfortunately, cannot define and find out what is it that triggers their headaches. Mm -hmm. Now, pathophysiologically speaking, the most advanced and recent science shows that migraine is a nutritional deficiency syndrome at the level of mitochondria in the brain. Mm -hmm. And as we know, mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. It generates ATP, which our cells require to have enough energy to metabolize and get rid of the byproducts of the metabolism. So so if your mitochondria is dysfunctional and is not able to produce enough energy, so it cannot fight the oxidative stress, and therefore the oxidation level goes up, and that uh, basically triggers the release of certain neurochemicals, which uh, cause the neuroinflammation. Mm. And when your brain is inflamed, when the arteries around your brain are inflamed, they become more dilated and become very sensitive. And that is why anytime you have a migraine attack, you feel like your heart is pounding in your brain. And because mm. that is because the vessels have become sensitized and dilated. And so that is at this point, the most 
recent evidence points to uh, migraine to be a nutritional deficiency syndrome. And that is why we really, as physicians and healthcare providers, we have to go to the root cause of any disease to Absolutely. be able to effectively control or treat it. All right. Well, everybody wants to know what are the nutritional deficiencies? <laughs> you know, what are the things? Because, you know, that, that puts it in the realm of being preventable and treatable. And I think for many people who suffer from migraines, they get left with using really, really powerful drugs that have their, that come with their own side effects. So what if we could just not get those migraines? Yes, you, you hit the nail on the head. So as a physician dealing with these patients, with patients with migraine headaches, we have used throughout the years that we've treated these patients with prescription medications. Some work, of course, miraculously, but some have significant side effects. Despite that they work so well, some of them they may cause excessive weight gain. Some mm. may give you really bad dry mouth or change of taste of food in your mouth. A lot of them will make you foggy, dizzy, and like a brain fog that you cannot get rid of. Mm. And as you know, again, migraine is a condition that affects you when you're much younger. Yeah. At the age that you're in school and you are going to be like starting your life, educate yourself, start a family, and now here you are taking these medications and they are making you foggy. They can You cannot study well. You can't and function, really. You cannot yeah. function properly. And that is actually how we started looking into what else is the option. And a lot of our patients who were taking these medications, either not working for them or they experienced side effects, they always asked us, what is, is there anything else? Is there any other option? And that is when we started looking into all these natural ingredients that for decades or maybe for about 100 years, there was a track record of efficacy in managing and treating migraine headaches or even tension type headaches and post-concussive headaches. Mm. Because post-concussion, the pathophysiology is very similar because to you migraine. Have right? You have inflammation, mm -hmm. exactly. And you have higher oxidative stress. So a lot of the treatments that currently are available for migraine are applied to post-concussion headaches. And that is how we started looking into these uh, all natural ingredients. And even the Ac American Academy of Neurology and the American Headache Society, they have extensive research that shows that certain naturally occurring minerals, vitamins, and herbal compounds have significant efficacy in managing migraine headaches. And therefore, there was efficacy designation that was provided by these prestigious organizations to in, in support of their efficacy to be used in migraine patients. Wow. Okay, so we're going to come back to those. I was just thinking about something you said earlier about the the escalation of, like if you have migraines when you're 15, you can expect that by the time you're 25 or 30 years old, you may get you would just have them more frequently. Why do you think that is? Well, uh, the reason is a process that is called central sensitization syndrome. And basically, if you could picture that our central nervous system is wired such that every time there is a trigger for any kind of a disease or painful condition, the brain becomes more and more sensitized gradually to that same trigger or mm. to that same painful condition. The, pro the, con the concept is called central sensitization. Okay. So the art of the physician dealing with these patients is to prevent central sensitization in the central nervous system, in the brain pretty much. That's where you know migraine pathophysiology is happening. And if we are successful managing and preventing the central sensitization syndrome, then we would at least be successful not letting these numbers of headaches get out of control. So they may remain like two or three a month and not suddenly in, in, in a decade turn to be a 15 headache day a month problem. Yeah, which is debility at that point. I yes. mean, two to three is bad enough. 15, well, migraine you can't hold is down a, a job. Absolutely. Migraine is a leading cause of disability and a huge, uh, has a huge economical impact. Because when you're suffering, you're staying home and mm -hmm. you can't go to work. So you can't make money for your family and your workplace will start suffering from, you know, you not being able to produce what you were hired to do so. Well, and you lose your income. Absolutely. For sure. Okay, so 
do you have interest in headaches just for headache's sake as well? Or do you purely focus on the migraine? No, I'm a headache subspecialist. Yeah. I'm a clinical instructor of surgery at University of Illinois and a headache. I'm a fellow of the American Headache Society. But we deal with all types of headaches, post-concussion right. he headache. I've actually had a, a big talk for traumatic brain injury just about a month ago in San Diego. Mm -hmm. And as a pain physician and headache subspecialist, we deal with all types of painful disorders. But migraine is a condition that is really disabling. Yeah. And that is really the main focus of our practice well and there's just no good solutions to date so or there haven't been we're going to talk well, about well, one potentially uh, absolutely I'm, I'm so happy that we are able to point out that the, besides prescription medications which again uh, at times they are very effective sometimes they have but unfortunately significant side effects but after almost a decade of research exploring different all naturally occurring uh, compounds, we formulated a supplement which is all natural. It is vegan, organic, non-GMO, and it is third party tested to be free of heavy metals. And uh, even it is packaged inside veggie capsules for rapid and easy absorption from the gastrointestinal tract. And we named it MyGuard. And basically preventing or guarding you against migraines mm. and we studied it with an extensive research team and extensively studied it and we have about a 72 percent efficacy level which is in line or above even prescription medications wow. without their side effects of course and so is this the kind of thing that people might take only when they're getting a headache or is it the kind of thing that you might take on an ongoing basis to avoid ever getting a head to avoid getting headaches in the first place or at least reducing the incidence of the headaches yes so my guard would be for a person who is experiencing more than three or four headache days a month uh, of course you can use it if you have one or two headache uh, attacks of migraine to prevent that disabling headache, of course. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times, if you have just one headache, if it's just one off headache every few months, you may not need to take something for it every day. Mm -hmm. Because my guard, despite that, it's all natural, but you have to take it every day. So you do have to take it every day. It's every a, day. A, you have yeah. to take two veggie capsule every day, capsules every day, but it's no different than taking two multivitamins sure. every day because the formulation is such that it is good for brain health, for circulation, and it is a very powerful antioxidant and anti-inflammatory. A lot of our, Absolutely. A lot yeah. of our patients, it's an interesting phenomenon or byproducts of taking MyGuard. A lot of uh, patients, especially ladies who take it, they came back and they say, have you noticed anything different about me? And I say, no, please tell me. <laughs> they say, my skin is glowing. I, I just uh, think it is from my guard. And we don't want to get off track because we are purely focused on managing and preventing uh, migraine headaches. But it is an antioxidant. And as you know, skin is very prone to oxidative stress. And if you're taking a powerful antioxidant, it, it may influence and help your skin as well. That's awesome. So I think so too. A <laughs> <laughs> little bit of a side benefit there that was unplanned. Exactly. So do you want to maybe dig into one or two of the ingredients in my guard that you think are, I mean, we're not going to go through the whole formula, obviously, but so. is there are there one or two ingredients that you feel are just real standouts in this formula? Absolutely. that? Yes, one of the biggest distinguishing factors between this MyGuard and other supplements that are on the market is inclusion of alpha-lipoic acid. Mm. And our most recent research has pointed out that more than 90% of individuals who su suffer from high-frequency migraine headache attacks, they have significant deficiency in their alpha-lipoic acid level. And, and as we know, alpha-lipoic acid is a naturally occurring, we have it in our own body, bodies and uh, but supplementing that will be helping the antioxidant capacity of the formula plus magnesium and vitamin b2 have been shown that through a lot of research even when you show up to an emergency room with an attack of migraine first thing they do they start an iv for you and they give you intravenous magnesium really so absolutely yes that's the first line of treatment 
So a special formulation which has significant synergistic activity, including the magnesium and vitamin B2 and alpha lipoic acid. And of course, there are uh, other ingredients such as ginger and fever few and coenzyme Q10, all with efficacy levels designated by the American Headache Society and American Academy of Neurology. They all support each other synergistically to be an effective preventer of migraines. Yeah. So the CoQ10 is there for the mitochondrial support, yeah? Yes. Absolutely. Powerful yeah. antioxidant. And vitamin B2 is extremely important in reestablishing the proper electron transport mechanisms inside mitochondria, which is defective because of lack of specific nutrients. Mm, interesting. Well, it's interesting also in the mitochondria because, you know, as we age, we just don't, they don't function as well, right? Salvage pathways become inefficient. Mm -hmm. You yes. get enzymes coming up that Absolutely. grab nutrients that you may want, yes. like when we're talking about NAD, for example. Yes. So it's interesting when you're able to, you know, bring in nutrients like that. And to your point, all the side benefits that people will experience Yes. with it. Yes. So have you found clinically that there's anything else that, that helps to support in addition to the supplement? I mean, the supplementation is going to be great, but are there any other things you found that can be really helpful? Because, you know, we're here at the Changing Life and Destiny. Um, there's lots of technologies out there. Is there anything else out there that you already are implementing or you're thinking, hmm, maybe this is something we should look at? Well, a few things that a person can do by themselves, which has significant benefits. One would be a good sleep pattern. So mm -hmm. if you're not sleeping well, that's a, one of the biggest triggers for migraines. But hydration with water, not with soda or other you know drinks plenty of water and a good night's sleep and a low impact aerobic activity on an everyday basis because when you are active aerobically you will incre increase your own endorphins and those neurochemicals that are controlling pain so our studies have shown that people that simply are exercising every day they sleep well and they drink plenty of water they have at least 60 to 70 percent decrease in their headaches compared to prior to starting this wow. regimen so just these simple things if you implement that you would be uh, in the clear maybe even if you don't have frequent headaches frequent migraine headaches by changing a little bit of a your lifestyle you may overcome a lot of these headaches i mean it is incredibly powerful and these themes keep coming back you know we've we've recorded now a number of podcasts in this weekend because we're we're doing a whole season in a weekend and it's remarkable how these basics no matter who we're talking to what we're talking about sleep hydration, managing stress, all of these things just keep coming back over and over again. Absolutely. One one thing I, I may add, if, if there is time, is our logo for the product for MyGuard is nature's shield against migraine. Mm. And really nature has so much to offer and we have for a long time neglected that. And it is amazing uh, what in this seminar is being broadcasted loud and clear is that we really have to take a step back and reevaluate how we are doing things, how we are delivering the healthcare system. And there are th simple things we can do and going to the root cause of all those disease processes and prevent them maybe by using the power of that is within our own body and power of nature. Yeah, I love it. Thank you so much. This has been My so pleasure. enlightening. And I'm, you know, I think that all the people who are helping with those migraines are very grateful for your work. Do my um, best. Oh, actually, you know what, just before we stop, why don't we give people the the URL, the website where they can get more information and maybe get their hands on some MyGuard for themselves. Uh, you can visit GetMyGuard, that is M-I-G-U-A-R-D dot com. And there's all the research behind it. All the ingredients are described and a lot of information that you could hopefully use for benefiting you. Amazing. Thank you so much. Doctor. My pleasure. Thank you.